Hi, Julie Asher, Recipes for a Sweet Life. Now, who said that summer barbecues had to be all about hamburgers and hot dogs? Cookies make complete sense, too, if you ask me. In fact, I've got two 3D look-alike cookies today that look so much like real grills that actually pass for the real thing. You can make them as they are or simplify the project by taking them off their legs and creating more of a short hibachi style grill, or you can take them up a notch and actually fill them with candy inside. So let's talk about what we need for this project. The core cookies are six. I've got two domes, one with three holes in the bottom, which will be the bottom of the grill, a slightly smaller dome for the top, a large four inch round, which will form the ground or the base of the cookie. A smaller, I think it's one and seven eighths inch circle, which will form the grease trap or the grease catch. It's got holes in it as well to allow the legs to pass through. And I'll have all the exact dimensions for these pieces in the video description. And then lastly, two seven eighths inch rounds, I believe, for the wheels. Again, if you want to do a hibachi style grill, you can skip the holes and skip the legs, but I'm going to use these papero. I think that's the pronunciation, little Korean cookies to form the legs and they're perfectly constructed for the legs because they're dipped with chocolate and you'll see why that's handy as we start to put the cookie together later. And then lastly, there's a seventh optional gingerbread cookie piece for the side table that you see on this grill here. You, you can choose to do that or not. If you don't do it, typically I'll put two handles on the grill. And then lastly, this is a very accessory rich project. And as you can see, we have a wide array here ranging from everything from fire to the grill itself, both royal icing transfers, to hot dogs, hamburgers, grass, daisies, and then we get into fondant appliques, some of the grill vents, handles, and wheels, also the spatulas will be done in fondant. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make some of the more unusual shapes that go into this project. The ground, which is a basic four or four and a quarter inch round, and the wheels are really straightforward, flat pieces. But the domes, the grease catch, and the side table are a little bit more complicated. So those are the ones we're going to focus on. Starting first with the first dome, I have a whole other video about how to contour cookie dough. So if I go quickly here, you can reference that. I'm working with my gingerbread dough, which is chilled, it just came out of the fridge, so it's a little firm right now. You can soften it for a few minutes at room temperature and it will be a little bit easier to roll, but it's working just fine. Okay, when you've got it rolled to the point that you don't see any cracks in it, usually that requires rolling it a little thinner than usual, maybe 3 16 of an inch thick. I'm using my ruler, which is quite handy and long. You can use also a large spatula to make sure it's disengaged from the counter. And then to create a dome of this shape, I'm going to form it over my hemisphere silicone molds. These come in a big sheet typically, and I've cut them down for easier handling with cookies. I'm using, I believe, let's see, I can measure it. It's about a three and three quarter inch dome to make the lid, and we'll use a slightly bigger one to actually create the bottom. So once you get it cut, you'll see how nicely it lifts off. Whoops, center it on the dome. And then you just want to slowly work out the creases. Move it directly onto my baking sheet, on the back of my baking sheet, and it'll bake like so. Now for the base or the bottom of the grill, we do the same process, but I want to make sure I locate the holes in the proper spot. And to do that, I actually took a cookie cutter. I have the dimensions in the video description and sort of lightly scored the base, centered it on the back, lightly scored the base, and that just gives me an idea of how, where I need to place them, how far apart. So I'm just going to do three. Right on the edge of the scored mark should put me in the right place. And I'm just using a number eight or a number nine pastry tip to cut the holes in the bottom. So that'll again go on the back of the cookie sheet off the cardboard and bake like so at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for the normal baking time. And then let me just show you these last two pieces. Namely the grease catch or grease trap. This serves two purposes. One, it makes the grill look more realistic because all grills have these. 
but it also helps keep the legs together and make the assembly process go a lot more easily than you might think. So again, I'm rolling that until I don't see any cracks in it. And I want to make sure I can disengage it from the surface. And here I'm using a 1 and 7 8 inch cutter. I like to roll this pretty thin actually so it looks more lifelike. So I rolled that a little bit thinner. And that too will get shaped over the same dome so it has the same contour. Just like so. Gently press it into the top. And again, we want to cut some holes in it so that the legs can pass through. And in this case, they need to be a little bit wider apart. Here they're about a half an inch apart on the bottom of the grill. Here they need to be roughly an inch apart. So I cut them pretty close to the edge, maybe a quarter of an inch or so from the edge. We don't want them too close to the edge or the legs can pop through, break through when we assemble it. But we want them far enough apart that the legs can spread open towards the bottom when we put the grill together, roughly equally spaced. Doesn't need to be super exact in terms of the spacing. Okay, so that's ready to go in the oven as well. And then our last piece is the optional tray. This can be a little tricky to adhere to the grill, so you can choose to do it or not. Again, I'm gonna like to roll it, I like to roll it relatively thin, maybe closer to an eighth of an inch than three sixteenths of an inch. So it looks more lifelike, not too thick and clumsy. And to do that, I kind of franken cookied. I use two cookie cutters. Franken cookie is a cookie term that someone in the cookie world introduced to refer to creating different shapes out of multiple cutters, either piecing pieces together or subtracting pieces away from another piece with another cookie cutter. And that's what we're going to do. I took a two by three inch rectangular cutter and I'm going to lop off a lot of it by coming in with a much larger round. I think this is about three and a quarter inches and I'm cutting about seven eighths of an inch away from the edge, just centering it on that piece. And then I'm left with that piece there. The first thing I like to do is set up a draining area for my domes and I'm using the same silicone molds I used before except I'm elevating them with two others to allow the dome to sit above it with some room to spare to allow some drainage room, if you will. The other thing I'm doing differently with this one with holes is I am going to stick a piece of plastic inside it or on the mold just to prevent as much icing as possible from flowing into those holes. Now I've got my royal icing of dipping consistency which is it flows rather gradually off a spoon. I don't want it too thin because it'll roll then off the cookie and I don't want it too thick because I don't want to leave any tracks in it. So I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to just submerge it completely into the icing. Some people will pipe it over the top of rounded shapes, but I find that by dipping I get a much more uniform effect than I do ever by piping over it. Okay, once it's draining, as always, I want to clean up the bottom as much as possible. So I take a clean trussing needle and just scrape off the excess. And I might do this a couple of times as it flows off. My plastic here is getting a little bit in the way because it shifted. And then while you have it here in position before the icing dries, I do try to get as much out of the holes. You'll see little depressions as possible with my trussing needle. So for sponging, I'm using the same liquid gel food coloring that I used to color my icings, but I am extending it with a little bit of water so that it flows a little bit more smoothly and simply sponging the color on with a little sponge or a sponge brush on both sides of the tray like so. If it drives too thin, I'm going to do it on both hands, both gloves. Just add a little more food coloring to the water and you'll get a more opaque paint. So if you feel like you're seeing through to the gingerbread too much, you can always darken up the color that way. Same thing with the wheels. We've got two of them. And then lastly, we want to do the sticks. Uh, one thing to note about the sticks, the fat chocolate end is actually going to go down and the uncovered part of the stick will insert into the holes and the chocolate here, the transition point, will serve to hold the legs in place so they don't slide up all the way through the dome. So that's why I chose this particular stick. But I, I wanted them to look more grill-like, so I am covering them too. And believe it or not, this 
food coloring will dye the chocolate, it tends to beat up on it a little bit at first. So you usually have to give it two or three coats until it's completely coated. That's the basic sponging process. So the last piece that I have to color before we start making all the accessories to go on top is the grease trap. And I am spraying this with an edible luster spray, a PME brand luster spray. I like this particular brand because it dries super quickly and it goes down really, really evenly. Give it a healthy shake before you start. And I'm spraying on paper towel because it's a little more absorbent, less will pool up around the piece. Holding it about five inches away and moving in even circular motions. We wanna get both sides. Probably should have started with the inside because I think more of the bottom may end up exposed in the piece. But either way, you just wanna make sure that you don't leave a spot on it, wherever it's, on whatever edges it's resting on. And then you wanna let that dry completely before we assemble it. And to make the grill, I'm using an icing of outlining consistency. It holds a relatively tight line. I've marked out the the shape of the grill here, and I'm gonna pipe really slowly so I can get around it in a nice round. I find that a relatively thick icing tends to wanna to go more straight. If it's not perfectly round, it's not the end of the world. It'll be less noticeable when it's in the grill. Okay, and then the next thing I wanna do is create two lines down the center roughly, as most grills have some center lines going in one direction. And I'm gonna pipe these pretty close together. And then the next step is to create the lines going the opposite way. And I like to start in the middle and do one side piping left to right because I'm right-handed. Okay, I think that's pretty good, except for the break that I didn't fix there and then knock down these edges a teeny bit. They will be concealed in the final construction and will be less noticeable. So there you have it. That again needs to dry until you can lift it off. The acetate, and just to show you what I mean by that, I've got a piece that I did earlier. I dried it. This has been sprayed with a silver spray, the PME edible spray. I use silver instead of pearl. And to get it off, you want to spray it before you actually lift the transfer off the acetate while it's still secured to the acetate. Because if you spray it when it's not secured, you can blow the grill around and break it. And to get it off, I'm simply going to take a thin paring knife and gently lift. So once you've got it disengaged, you want to just slide it carefully off the acetate and onto a cardboard. I wouldn't put it back on the acetate because my acetate came off a roll and it has a little bit of a curve to it. And if you put it on curved acetate, you will snap it. So put it back on a cardboard until you're ready to assemble the grill. So with the accessories made, we're ready to start the assembly process. My grill pieces are also completely dry. Before we do that, you want to make sure you file the bottom, the top edge of the bottom piece and also the bottom edge of the lid so they're nice and flat and they have a nice tight fit like so. The other thing I do after filing is I actually sponge the inside black, much the way we sponge the other pieces. And that's just so that any mess on the interior, like any red icing, you can see a little bit there, fades away and is invisible in the final construction. I might cover that up a little bit better, but it's a little deep in there. So it's unlikely to show anyway. Now my next step before we can actually put the grill we piped inside is to put some little supports inside to catch it. My grill is actually designed to sit on the inside, not rest on the top, but I don't want it to fall to the inside. So in order to keep it from doing that, I've cut little strips of fondant. I've just rolled this fondant to the thickest setting on my pasta machine, which is number one. And 
I'm creating little stops, if you will, just, just slightly beneath the top of the grill. So when I place the lid on, it won't sit on top of the fragile royal icing grill transfer we just created. I think I need to create them too, too deep though in order to reliably catch the grill. So I'm gonna double deck these two here and I'm just using a little bit of corn syrup to adhere them. I'm gonna do that in four places all the way around, roughly the same height. Okay, so the final check is to make sure they're roughly the same height off the edge of the grill because they're gonna be catch, catching the grill on the inside. And now I wanna conceal this really rough edge and I'm gonna do that with a lighter gray fondant that kind of resembles silver. We're not gonna paint it, but we're just gonna cover it with that to clean up the edge. So to cover that edge, I'm gonna to turn to the gray fondant I mentioned, just making sure it's smooth and I'm gonna roll it relatively thin because I just, I don't want it to be, create a lot of thickness on top, on top of the grill. I just want it to cover that where the icing meets the cookie, conceal that. You could paint the upper edge, but I just thought a slightly different detail here would be nice. I could have painted it black if I wanted to. Okay, so it's nice and smooth there. And I'm gonna cut my outer ring and I'll have the dimensions for these cutters in the video description. And then center this next piece on it as best as possible before cutting so it looks symmetric from the top. That's pretty good. And to remove that inner piece, I'll take my trussing needle. I don't want to misshape the outer one too much. It's going to stretch a little bit when I, because I have to lift it up onto the grill. And to get that down, I'm just going to use a little bit of corn syrup again. I'm avoiding royal icing here because royal icing, if it has any thickness to it, can be a little bit lumpy. And we want this to lie really flat. So I'm going to start by sticking corn syrup on just a part of the edge and get it anchored on that that edge and then stick it down everywhere else. This stretched a little bit when I picked it up, but I think it'll be okay. Okay, so we've got my round mostly up here. It's stuck on one area. I'm gonna just add corn syrup as we go. I don't like to put corn syrup along the entire rim initially because if the fondant falls into it in the wrong way, it's gonna be hard to detach it and reapply it later. Okay, and then once you've got corn syrup everywhere with clean hands, just make sure that it's nicely aligned and sitting flush all the way to the edge. So I've got my grill lid all filed down, as I said before. I'm not gonna sponge the inside because this won't be lifted up and looked at from the inside, but if you wanted to, you could. And I generally choose a front the side or the presentation that looks neatest and most level to me. And I think that's the one that's facing me right now, which I'll just turn to the camera. And now I'm going to attach my little handle, which again was made with cord of rolled fondant in a light gray with a little grip of dark gray fondant on top allowed to dry. So it's completely firm now. Now to stick it here, I could use blobs of royal icing, but it's gonna skid a little bit on the surface if I just do that, because the surface is rather th slick. So what I, typically do is I apply little little pieces of fondant with a touch of corn syrup to give something for the handle to stick into. This is when royal icing now comes into play. I'll take a teeny bit of thick gray icing tacked as glue, just a teeny bit, into those little holes where I had rested the handle before, and then just nest it in there. Now, when that's completely dry, I would come in with a tiny paintbrush and some luster dust and also paint these gray parts silver. But in the meantime, we're gonna add a vent. I've got three to choose from. 
These have already been pre-sprayed. Again, these were cut with fondant, dried, and then sprayed with, with the silver spray. And I think for this, I'm going to use a little bit of icing here rather than the corn syrup I initially put down because it's going to be less likely to slide with a little thicker icing there. And that looks really cute. Here's the piece we sprayed earlier, the little side table. It's all completely dry. Now, as with the handle I did on the lid, if I were just to glue that with royal icing, it could slip down. It tends to stick a little better if I have a little bit of fondant between it and the dome. So I'm cutting a, a thin strip of black fondant, which I'm going to line along here, and then we'll glue it we'll glue it on. So we'll start first by using a little corn syrup to apply the fondant to the inside of the grill. And I've rolled this fondant pretty thin because I don't want to really see it. It's a, about a number three setting on my pasta machine. And I'm just going to line that inner area with it. It could have had a better color match, a little blacker fondant as well, but it's not the end of the world and then trim off that extra. And then at this point, I would come in with my gray or black royal icing, just dab a very small amount of it. Could even use red so that if it were to slide, it would match the color of your grill. And then I would slide it into place like so. I've got this sitting up on one of the molds. It just happens to be the right dimensions. I would slide that into place leave that support there until it was completely dry and then take it off like so. But I don't really want to mess up the side of this. I'd bring it all the way in and then press it into the side. Make sure it's level and you're good to go. So with the fondant rim on the top relatively dry, I gave it about a half an hour, hour of drying time and this piece completely clear so you don't press anything into the fondant because it's still soft. You can invert it as I have here and we're ready to thread the grease trap through the legs and into the bottom of the grill. And so it's easiest to start by threading two together, thread them first through the silver piece and then into the red, and then to get the third one in. And onto the grass, it's ready to go. At this point, I haven't glued anything in place. I won't do that until it's upright. And we're gonna do, do that once we have it into position with a combination of black royal icing from the inside and green royal icing on the grass. Okay, so I've got it into position. Sometimes that takes a little juggling. So you don't want to mess with it now, but what you want to do is, before you glue these into place, you want to make sure your sticks are lower than the supports so that when you put your grill down on top, it doesn't hit the stick and break. The other thing you might want to do is to hide the cut end of the sticks, is to sponge it. with a little more black. That'll just hide those pieces that are coming up close to the top of the grill. And then we want to grip, we want to glue everything in place. So I'm going to load a bunch of black royal icing in and around all those sticks so they can't slide out of position. And I'm also going to glue from the bottom so those legs don't shift at the bottom. And with that, I'm going to use my green icing for grass. We're ready for the moment of truth, which is getting the grill on top, our delicate transfer. This is one I did a little bit earlier where I did mount the side plate and you can see how once it's completely dry, it's quite nice and we are ready to go ahead and put the grill down to do that. I just want a little bit of dab of royal icing on each of these internal supports so that it will stick to something because the fondant's now dry and very carefully lift up the sprayed grill and ease that into position. Now we're ready to accessorize with all those beautiful things we made earlier. First thing I wanna do is get another wheel on the bottom. I've got one on already. 
and I'm going to put the other one on right behind it. These are one-sided wheels, so we are going to cover the back side with a little bit of grass. I didn't want to, I didn't want to put two wheels back to back because I just simply thought it would look too clunky. And too thick. This is really a project that views best from one side. Okay, that looks good. Now I think what I want to do is start laying down items on the grill. And I'm going to put a bunch of fire down to start. Just a little bit of royal icing where you want to put stuff. And then don't drop it, but rather place it. And I don't even push it down because I'm afraid to break that grill. Just make sure that whatever you put down is, if you're going to put the lid on the grill, that it's short enough to clear the lid. These might be a little bit too big. That one there in particular, so I'm going to use a shorter piece here. There it is shaping up from the front. Looking pretty good. If I wanted to, I could put a big thing of smoke in the middle, lean it, lean it up against the fire, but I don't think that is going to clear my lid. So it's too tall. I could break it down. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll break it in half. There we go. Got a little curl of smoke coming up. Right next to the hamburgers. Got a really small piece. There we go. On the one up front, I have a whole plate of food and a little piece of foil with cheese. So you could put as much or as little on this piece as you want. And now we want to finish out the bottom, just create more of a vignette. So I definitely want to cover, I had a little bit of green fondant I used here to actually secure that in place. So I want to cover that. So we're going to grass it all out. We're going to pipe some grass down. We're going to also plant some of the grass that I had pre-piped and made transfers of. So let's start by using some of that pre-piped pre -piped grass. I like it because it's two-tone and it lends some nice, nice dimension and color down here. So just sticking that in, in front of the feet. And I'll be using grass piped as well with this tip that I've got here. It's number 133 tip to fill in a little bit later, but I want to get some of this taller grass down just to add a little bit of depth and dimension to the piece. So I think I'm going to put a little plate of food in the foreground. We assembled this one before. I don't need quite that much glue behind it. To just give the essence of a vignette and then we'll pipe a little bit more grass and maybe put a flower or two around the wheels and we're done. And again just creating a slightly different texture by piping grass as opposed to using the, the pre-made grass. You could do one or the other or or both as I have. I think we're getting close. I just want to I just want to put a couple little flowers on. We went to the effort of making those daisies and you'll see I have a little patch of daisies under e each of these. I just want to show you how I actually get those on there and to get it onto the end of what I previously piped usually at this stage I'll just add a little bit of icing at the end. And then I'll just attach the daisy to that icing. So I've got a cute little flower. And then that could be stuck in the grass right behind this wheel and look pretty darn cute. And you can use as many or as few of them as you want. I think I'm just going to leave that one there. There's one accessory we didn't use that I did want to also put on this particular piece just to create a little bit of shine. And that's the tin foil that I made with wafer paper and edible silver leaf. I think I'm just going to stick a piece down behind the plate as if it's fallen off the grill. And that just adds a little bit of shimmer to the whole project. I'm going to stick that down with any color icing because it's unlikely to show. And stick it under the grill as if it's fallen down there. I think that looks pretty cute. And then as a last potential touch, if any of the silver here on the dome, if any of it's dulled from handling, 
You can come in with a little bit of luster powder and dry dust it on or extend it with extract and shimmer it back up. And as a last step, I would put a handle on the side of the grill typically. And I do that much the same way I put it on the lid, except I like to do it standing up so I can see that it's truly level. So I'd first mount a strip of fondant to the side of the grill with a little bit of corn syrup, then apply a little bit of gray royal icing of a thick glue consistency to the ends of the handle and stick it in the side. To prop something when it's standing vertically, I typically rest the piece on a piece of styrofoam and stick a skewer into the styrofoam and then lean it against the handle and that way it'll hold it in place. So with that added touch of sparkle with the foil on the bottom and the lid now on top, you've got a perfect summertime dessert or favor. Ideal for Father's Day, in fact, or any summer party. Till next video, live sweetly.